Hey everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, today we are going to talk about multi-tenancy and machine learning systems. What does it mean? Uh, the different types of implementations and the observability aspects of it. Before that, let me introduce myself. My name is Ori Tsari. I'm the chief architect at Supervise. And over the past eight years, I've been in both sides of machine learning as a data scientist and, and as an ML engineer. And actually I had a chance to develop models from research and take them all the way to production. And therefore to experience the variety of difficulties that the machine learning world can provide us. And for those of you who haven't heard about Supervise yet, uh, we are a machine learning observability platform and we are helping data science teams to scale their machine learning activities and providing them the tools to make sure that their models work well in production. As, it, as I will show during this talk, machine learning can scale very quickly. And therefore we took the API first approach in order to create automation using, using a production insights. So let's get started. Uh, in my previous work, I was asked to do a POC and build a fraud detection model. I, used, I took one of my customers' data and built the new model on top of it. And actually, the POC went very well, more than, they expected, uh, more than I expected, and gave very good uh, model performance. Then we decided to go with it to production. And not only that, we decided on also to make it available to all of our customers, not only the one that I used in order to build this model. So then I think, okay, no problem. I will add all the customer data and the model will still have like a great performance, but that wasn't the case. After adding all the customer's data, the performance suddenly dropped. Uh, and the model was not as good as I thought it would be. And uh, then I do some kind of a quick drill down and saw that the model worked okay for some of the customers, but for the rest of them, it was no better than random, let's say it like that. The main reason was that different data distribution and different uh, concepts are across the customers. Like there, for example, the gaming merchant has very different patterns from the e-commerce merchant, and that caused the model to fit well in some subpopulation and to underfit to different subpopulations. Which take me to think how I can solve it. And uh, I see in front of me a few few options to deal with it. They create a global model that will serve all the customers, didn't work so well. So the other options was create a model for each one of the customers or segment the customers and create a model per each segment. Each segment means that probably the, the customers with the same distribution will be part of the same segment and will be served by the same model or use transfer learning. And I just want to emphasize that if we decide to split the model into the, the problem into several models and not use the global model solution, there are still a lot of questions that need to be taken into account. Let's say that the new customer arrived and he still don't have enough data to create a model, uh, to create and train a model for him. So maybe we will decide to do some kind of a default model, like a safety net. Um, so as you can understand, each one of those strategies has its own points and cons, but I will not go into more details here. I will send you after that a link that we, you can read more about uh, each one of those methods. And today I want to focus only on the engineering aspects of it. So I want to create a quick poll. Um, I would like to hear from you guys here who is using uh, which one of those methods. So I will launch the poll.
interesting. Okay, so as I can see, most of you here, around 60%, even more, uh, using one model per customer scenario, and around 40% is using the global model approach. So it's going to be super relevant for you to use the one model per, customers, per customer uh, scenario. So, uh, now that you understand that very quickly we can find ourselves ourselves with which with a lot of models in end. Uh, sorry. In my case, I solved the one business problem and found myself trying to operate and maintain more than 200 models in production. This is a scale problem, not longer a machine learning research problem. And when I come to deploy it, I try to read more about it, but I didn't saw any best practices there. So as always in MLOps, I turn to the traditional software engineering to search for a similar problem. Maybe I will, can take some ideas from there. And I found one. In software engineering, we have the concept of single tenant and multi-tenant applications. In single tenant, as you can see in the left side, each customer as its own, as each user, as its own independent infrastructure, which contain the database and the Kafka and the application services and so on. And in multi-tenant architecture, a single instance of software like the uh, web services, the, the infra that contain the database and the Kafka and so on, will serve multiple customers uh, at once. Each approach here has its own advantages and disadvantages. The single tenant means more resources and it's hard to maintain. We have a lot of components up and running and serving the users, but it's more secure. There is totally isolation between different users. And it's also more easy and independent and we can enable some kind of customization. We can change only one service for a specific uh, a type of users and that will not affect the other users. On the other end, in the multi-tenant approach, we share the cost and the maintenance efforts. We have one infra that support our entire users, but it's less flexible and more difficult to customize things. It's hard to separate one user from the rest of them. Those are very similar to the machine learning problem, problem as well. So we decided that we want one model per customer, which is the right way for us. We also understand how the software engin uh, engineering paradigm, paradigm uh, tackling it. Now let's come back to the machine learning domain and talk about how we can implement it and later on try to understand how we can monitoring it. Monitoring it. Now I'm going to show you a simple automation pipeline, how it looks like, and how, it, how it's going to look in a single tenant implementation and in a multi-tenant implementation. Later on, we will see how we can monitoring it and which considerations need to take into account. So let's start with the basic building block. Because we are talking here about scale, high number of models, it will be very hard manually to manage the deployment process. In order to do so, I want to show you a blueprint for a one model deployment. The first level of machine learning process maturity, as Google defined it in their blog post, is to work with pipelines, as you can see over here. The pipeline impl implementation, we actually took the pipeline that we used in the experiment environment and use it in production environment. It will allow us to continuous delivery and continuous training. So as you can see over here, we extract the data for the training from the feature store. Then we validate it and prepare it, clean it and so on, fit a model, evaluate and validate it. If everything passed, 
so we can store it in the model registry and deploy the model to our serving platform, Seldon, TensorFlow serving, and so on. Once a new prediction will come through the model, it will be logged automatically to the monitoring service. And then let's say we, are, uh, we see a performance degradation, we can close the loop and trigger the pipeline again that will create a new model, and deploy it, and so on, and so on. Uh, let's see some code. So <laughs> here is the pipeline implementation. I use for fleet, uh, flight sorry, as the orchestrator. You can see here that I created a decorator, workflow decorator, the trapping the pipeline. And as you see before, I'm extracting the data, split it, fit the model, predict, evaluate, and validate. And if it's validated, I can deploy. It. And for the deployment, I use seldom, seldom serving. Uh, as you can see here, I'm pulling the training model from my model registry. In this case, I use a Google Cloud so Google Storage, and I'm creating a pod in my Kubernetes cluster that will serve the predictions requests. And we can even test it a bit up and running. So I have an endpoint to my model, the fault detection model. And I can send, uh, and I can send uh, the feature vector, and get back a response with a prediction. Great. So we have the basic building block uh, in place, the model pipeline. Now let's take, let's try to extend it and see how we can support our one model per customer use case using this specific uh, pipeline implementation. Uh, let's start with a single tenant approach. As I described before, single tenant means that each customer has its own independent resources. So here you can see a different pipeline for each one of the customers. Each pipeline will create a model and deploy it to an endpoint. If we are running on Kubernetes, so we can think about it that each endpoint is a different pod and that serves a different model uh, for a different customers. All is left it is to add some router that will redirect the traffic to the relevant model based on the split, splitting method. It could be naive one, it could be a rule-based, or it even could be like a model-based model based, uh, starting splitting. But the main idea that I want you to take from here is that the single tenant approach, we have different pipeline for each one of our customers. The main pros, the pros of this approach is Basically customization, we can take one pipeline and change the feature selection method or change the hyperparameters or even select a different algorithm for a specific customer. We also have independent deployments. We can very easily do a gradually release or an A-B test and deploy pipeline just for some customers. And if everything went well, we can roll out to the rest of them. There is also uh, independent, they are also independent. So, which means that we can retrain on demand. Let's say that we have a performance degradation for one, one of our customers. We can trig only, trigger only his pipeline and deploy a new model just for him. And in the case that new customers will arrive, we can create a new pipeline just for them that will uh, deploy a new model. This approach is also totally secure because there is a full isolation. There isn't a case that the data will be mixed across customers and we will use to train one model with another customer's data. On the other end, the main cons of this approach is that one data scientist with only one model training pipeline can create a lot of models which is hard to maintain, 
there is a lot, a lot of pipelines to track, and it could be costly. It, uh, it takes a lot of resources. Each pod is deploying to a new, uh, each, sorry, each serving is a different pod, which can create a, a lot of uh, resources. But I think that the main drawback here is that we have a technical debt here. The ML engineer needs to implement the traffic, the traffic splitting logic by himself. And as I said before, it can be complex. It can be like other models that do some kind of a clustering and split the traffic using those clusters, or it could be like uh, nested rules and so on. So this approach come with, uh, as I said, I, uh, I customization, but there is a technical detail. From code perspective, so I took the same workflow, the same pipeline that I showed earlier, and just added the merchant ID as a param to the pipeline, which means that the data extraction will be only for, for this specific merchant. And in the, end, in the end, it causes us to create and deploy a model for this specific merchant. And here you can see the router configuration, the routing configuration. In this example, again, I use Seldon. Uh, you can see that I passed the, mar the merchant ID as part of the, mod the request, the prediction request header, and Seldon will redirect the prediction to the, this specific merchant model. You can see here this specific image, model image for this specific merchant. And as I said, it can be much more complicated than just use the customer ID for routing. Let's switch to the multi-tenant approach. In the multi-tenant approach, if you remember, a single instance of software and the infrastructure is supporting and serves multiple customers. So here you can see that we have only one model pipeline. This pipeline creates a model per customer and store them in the model registry. And once we deploy, we deploy the model, we deploy them as a bulk the, in the, under the same endpoint. In this, actually, in Kubernetes, it's going to be on the same pod. The traffic splitting will be as pa part of the predict code. I will show it in a minute, but it's very different from the single tenant. If you remember that we have a different pod for each customer, now we will have same pod that will serve all the traffic and the routing will be part of the inference code. The big advantage of this approach is that it's the same flow. It's transparent, no matter, no matter if it's a one model per customer of, or it's a global model, we can implement it without actually knowing what is running under the hood. We can generalize it. There is no technical debt between the data scientist and the machine learning engineer. The splitting logic can be made by the data scientist as part of the inference code. Uh, there is no maintenance problem because we have only one model pipeline. And obviously the cost of sharing across the, in, the entire customer is it's much more efficient. The main drawbacks of this approach is that for new customers, we need to run the entire pipeline all over again and create a new version of model even without other customers have changed nothing. We just create a new model for them and it can be compute intensive, it can be risky. We are training without, with no actual reason for it. Uh, another drawback is if we, want, we detect some performance degradation for one client, we need to retrain the entire pipeline, which will in the end deploy a new version 
to the entire uh, population that we have for the all of the customers. From deployment deployment perspective, AB and shadow mode are harder to implement, but it can be done. But it will be much harder. And we have lack of customization. Adding editing just uh, one algorithm or feature selection method for a specific user or a specific customer can be, can be very tricky and uh, will create a lot of complexity in the training code. So here we are actually looking on the one step in the model pipeline, the model training step. And here you can see that in iterative way, I fitting just one model per merchant. So in the end, I will have still one model per customer that in the end will be deployed as a one object. Okay, you can see here merchant ID, it's merchant ID fits a new model. And I have a model list that will be uh, stored in the uh, Google storage. And this is the serving code. Once a request has been arrived to the model, the predict code will use the relevant model for it. If it's a prediction for merchant A, then the code will predict using the merchant A model. If it's a prediction that came to merchant B, then model B will give the prediction and so on. This, is, this code can be written by the data scientist. And for the ML engineer, it is just a serving code without knowing what's actually running under the hood. So we review the two different approaches, the single tenant and the multi-tenant. I just want to emphasize that we can create also more hybrid approach that will enable us more customization and flexibility. Here, for, the, for example, we can adjust the multi-tenant pipeline in a way that will enable us to fit only one customer model without changing the rest. Of course, it will create much more complexity in the code, but we can, can adjust it. It really depends on our uh, needs. So we talked about three different architectures. The single tenant, which each tenant has its own pipeline that create a different endpoint for each model. And the multi-tenant, one model pipeline that create model per customer and deploy them to the same endpoint as a, as a bulk deployment. There are some considerations that you need to ask yourself before coming to uh, select the right architecture for you. Uh, so you can think about few questions. How many customers I have? Uh, what is the frequency of new customers to arrive? What is the retraining frequency? Is there some uh, compliance stuff that will require different data isolation levels and so on? Uh, let's take for example, let's say for example that I have only 10 customers, which not going to increase soon. Maybe a single tenant approach is the right one for us because it gives us the customization, the maintenance and the cost not going to be so huge. So maybe this is the right solution for us. It depends on the number of customers, the retraining frequency, security and compliance issues, uh, need for customization and so on. Okay, so let's talk about observability. If until now we see concepts from the software engineering, when it comes to monitoring, it's totally different story. In software, in software single tenant use case, for example, each service is exactly the same for all of the users. It's just one more replica, but it's the same code. 
in machine learning use case, each model is, can be totally different. It could be built on a different training data. We can use different thresholds, even can be different algorithms. It's not like the same component replicated all over again. Each model is different from the other. So in a one model per customer use case, it's highly important to be able to get observability and alerts on a different levels of granularity. Uh, let's take, for example, the model performance. We want to know what is the overall performance across the entire models. But if there is a performance drop in some specific model, we want to get alerted on it and treat this specific model specifically. Or let's say that we have a data integrity issue in one of our features. We want to know how many models were affected and what is the impact of this uh, integrity issue. Or if there is a problem in some subpopulation in a specific model, there are few points of view, few ask questions and alerts that we can get from a, a, our observability platform. Uh, now I want to show you a quick view of our new beta version of a brand new project feature, uh, which is if you have one model per customer scenario, I think it will be very helpful, helpful for you. So here you can see that we have a fraud detection project. The project contains six different models, one for each merchant. They are all different models that coming to solve the same task, the same machine learning task. Let's create a monitoring policy. We want to get alerted when something went wrong with our, one of our models. So I can create a policy, monitoring policy. We have a predefined templates that we can use like drift templates for feature stability, data set shift, training serving skew. We also have some templates for data quality, like missing values and, and out of range values, model performance, and so on. And of course, like everything in our platform, we can customize it. We can create our own policy. Let's do so. So I can create a condition by selecting the metric. Let's say that I want to uh, monitor all the features uh, distribution shift. I can choose if I want the monitoring to be automatic or it's going to be manual based on threshold. That the automatic way is actually time series anomaly detection mechanism that will learn from the history and let us know when something uh, looks a little bit different. We can select different sensitivity levels and so on. Let's continue. We can uh, select the uh, level of the alert will if, if something went wrong in a specific segment or in the entire population. Let's set it to one manually, a daily on one o'clock. And where I, I will get notified when something went wrong. I can create in, get an email, create a webhook, get a Slack notification or a page or duty notification. And for this example, I will use the webhook. So once we will detect a distribution change in some features, a webhook will tr be triggered, which by the way, this webhook could re uh, create, a, will make the retraining pipeline run again. It will trigger the retraining pipeline that I saw, uh, that we saw earlier. So once we will detect an issue, a retraining pipeline will be triggered. Let's create the policy and give it a name. Okay, so once we have monitoring policy in place, then in the end, we will get an incident. It will run and see that something went wrong. For example, in this use case, 
we can see that there was an input drift in the project level. And we can see that there are actually two models out of those six that we saw earlier that were affected from this drift, the merchant A model and the merchant B model. I can see the entire story in one place and to understand the impact of this uh, incident, which can be very helpful in use cases that we have one model per customer, understand the impact of things. So let's get back. And sum things up. Machine learning problems and tasks can scale very fast especially in a scenario which we have one model per customer. Automation is a must, so work with pipelines. It will enable you continuous delivery and continuous training. We have different architectures and we need to ask ourselves what is the right one for us. It could be based on the number of customers, the frequency of new customers that are arriving and so on. When talking about observability, models that not equally, it is not, does not the same like software. We have different considerations that need to be taken into account because each instance can be very different from the others. And when talking about observability, we, are, we, we need to have few point of view, a global one or more drill down like the project level or a specific subpopulation inside of it. Okay, thank you for joining us. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you have any questions, please free, uh, uh, feel free to write me here in the chat. And also I will, uh, you can uh, register to our commu community edition and you will get an early access to the project feature that I just uh, showed earlier at part of the demo. Thank you very much. Okay, so the first question is, in what use case would it make sense to monitor across all my models? So to monitor across all the models, let's say that we have around 1000 models and we want to know in general, what is the fraud rate? What is the risk that we have? We want to get like a high level intuition about, about the model performance. Uh, so going model by model, can be very frustrating. We can have multiple models and we want to see the eye level. What is the total model performance? In this case, we want to monitor the project level. The, the model level could be only like the drill down, the, the explanation, try to understand, to understand which is the weak spots and where is the strong spots in, uh, and that we need to retrain again. So uh, can we go over what are the points in segments? So project could be for detection. Model is, is one model per customer, it's model for a specific merchant. And segment could be subpopulation. Let's say users that are that coming from Israel or from USA uh, around the age of 30. If we have a drift, in this specific subpopulation, we can consider later on to split them into a new model. Or if there is some performance degradation there, we can consider to change a way to change the threshold for this specific subpopulation. It's, it's a way for us to find weak spots in our, for our model, or it, it can be also a business entity which is meaningful for us. For example, a specific campaign, a specific VIP customers and so on that we want to monitor 
in and give it give them more important and which is more important than the rest of the population so why trigger a retraining pipeline entirely in anomaly was detected so yes i totally agree retraining is not only always the solution i just gave an example it could be like when we detect more critical stuff like a training serving skew it could be the case that we just want to uh, recalibrate the model or change uh, thresholds or split into two different models but retraining is not always the solution it was just an example uh, how do you access segments in supervised interface? So I will show in a minute. Here we can actually go to the segment screen and create a segment. We can create it, let's say, in demo. We can select a specific a segment in a specific model, and we can define what is the segment definition can be a specific device, specific device, and it can be also nested uh, condition that contain also, also the OS version. That way we can create a, a segment that is just subpopulation from the entire, from the entire model population, specific subpopulation. Okay, did I miss any question? So I think I got it all. Thank you very much again for joining us. You can sign up to our community edition. Sorry. You can sign up to our community edition and you will get an early access to the project uh, new beta feature. Thank you very much and bye-bye.